Welcome to West of Tulsa. I'm C.J. Ward, and we are broadcasting from Ventura, California. And we have, again, we have most of the crew here. We got Dan at the controls. Gabe is here as well. You. Yep. And and I'm going to say this. Gabe yelled at me last time because I didn't do it. But we're going to give our tip line right off the top because just so you guys know, nobody ever watches deep enough into our show. Not nobody. You do. Yeah, I will. So. <laughs> to to know our tip line. So we try to, we're going to do it at the top of the of the show at this point. So the, we have a tip line. Go to our website, westatulsa.com. Go to the tip line page, fill it out, send it back to us, because we would love to hear your story, maybe even have you here in studio. And uh, you have no excuses, because the two gentlemen joining us now have come in all the way from New Hampshire. Mm. Now think about it. You can't be any farther from Ventura in the continental U.S. than New Hampshire. Not much. Not much. <laughs> we got David and Cole Manns from the Manns Motor Company, and they showed up in a really cool ride. Uh, we, we like to ask people what they drove when they came here. So please tell us, what did you guys drive to come to West of Tulsa? So we have a Land Rover Defender 6x6 with the uh, LS3 engine in it. It's a beast. Yeah, it's a fun car. Yeah, great car. Thanks for, for bringing it. For our viewers that don't know what 6x6 means, can you explain what that means? Yeah, so there's three axles on it, one in the front and then two in the back, and it's six-wheel drive. Yeah, six-wheel six drive. <laughs> and you guys built these things from scratch. That's right. Wow. How did you get into that? It's a good question. Uh, I'm asked by a lot of people at our car shows, especially uh, parents with kids that have an aspiration to build cars. Um, I've always tinkered, and it's come from my grandfather, um, and I've always loved to build things. And uh, I was fortunate enough to be able to uh, retire early and uh, combine that with Cole went to college and hated it, just... School, you know, another uh, four years of school wasn't a match. And uh, so we I can relate to that, by the way. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so he, we took the opportunity and we put our heads together and we said, well, you know, what, what are we going to do? And we had um, built Defenders, uh, Unimogs, Mercedes Unimogs, uh, Land Cru Toyota Land Cruisers before together uh, for family and friends. And we thought about what we really wanted to do with – his whole life and the rest of mine. And uh, we uh, took a trip. We started planning. We knew we wanted to be in cars. We wanted to rebuild them. And uh, we weren't sh quite sure which ones, but we started to narrow in on Defenders, uh, probably because, one, we love them, but, two, they were popular. Uh, we didn't have to educate people on what what, what they were. Uh, we took a trip to England, um, we met with a ton of people, and uh, we met with two brothers who uh, have been doing this, I don't know, literally, but I think so, since they could walk. Their father had started a Defender um, shop, and uh, I just, right there, I knew it. Uh, the trip with my son, being with him for that period of time alone, which, um, you know, we took, we're a family of five. My wife and I used to take the kids on trips, but to be with just your son um, or just any one of your children, and we, um, it was, that was the moment. You knew I, it. I you knew it. That was it. I was going home. I was quitting. You know, I was retiring, and uh, we were going to do this. And so at that, that point, I knew it, and we put the kind of everything in motion to, to start doing this. Just go for your passion, right? It's uh, a passion project. Uh, yeah. I figured life's, you know, I, 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 maybe I'm a cliche, but I got to life is too short mm -hmm. and really saw this as an opportunity to uh, um, build something for my son and to do something I've always just wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And you were on that trip, and mm -hmm. did you feel the same way as you guys were – Going around checking yeah, out Land Rovers. Yeah, we were there, like building our supply chain and making relationships there, and, and it kind of all fell into place. And by the time we got home, we're like, we're ready to do this. That's exciting. Well, have yeah. you always been into the cars and stuff like that since you were a kid? I would imagine since as, your dad was. Yeah, as long as I could remember. Yeah, okay. was working on them. Yeah, it'd be weird if you're like you weren't into it. And all of a we're going to England. And it's like, <laughs> oh, I'm into it now. You know? Okay, got it. Got well, it. you mentioned your. You said your grandfather. Yes. Was he connected to the car world somehow? Did he? No. He just he just had a passion for it. No, them. he was um so <clears throat> legend has it or or family folklore has it that he invented uh, the first riding mower. 
Oh. Now, whether <clears throat> whether that's true or not, I don't know, <laughs> um, and and I'm making no claims against someone who, <laughs> you know, uh, Toro or any uh, any company. But I guess very early on, he had jiggered uh, together the parts and you know of uh, something that was moving that could cut grass. Um, he was always like that. It just anything you wanted done, he could do. Um, he had a workshop in the basement. They lived in an old colonial house and. It was just filled with things, a whole workshop, um, all, all the tools. and Tinker, mechanical. Yeah. yeah, and I've always enjoyed it. Well, and, and what we saw you guys drive in today could certainly cut grass. It could. It could. It could cut tall a lot grass. of grass. It could. Yeah. Yeah. Tall grass. It could mow through it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, I mean, it's beautiful. I mean, Thank there's you. no doubt about that. The vehicle, if you brought it to a Cars and Coffee anywhere in Southern California, correct me if I'm wrong, but you'd end up with a big crowd around you. Yeah. Yeah, you don't see those too often. No. You know, um, the part that uh, was interesting to me is that this car or this truck, I should say, um, I want to ask um, uh, David and, and uh, Cole, what, how did you guys put this together? Because the bed's longer right. and, you know, obviously the axles, but apparently um, Land Rover made these before. Yes. And you guys were able to source this build with factory OEM parts. So it's not all a bunch of fa custom fabricated metal, right? Right. Wow, that's that's amazing. Yeah, it's all factory Land Rover parts, other than the uh, the differential for the middle axle that sends power to the far rear is completely custom. Mm -hmm. And then obviously the motors, uh, you know, it's an LS, you know, GM yeah. motor, so it's not the same. Um, was that something that you guys wanted wanted to do? Or was that um, you know just decided to because the engine wasn't up to mustard, or you know, it, I guess honestly, it was both. It was mm. we wanted to but use that engine. Um, we had used it before, and it had the power that we, we needed. And frankly, that car of its day came with a variety of engines, but they were all, uh, well, the early ones that we, we can import into this country all came in with diesel engines in the low hundreds of horsepower, mm -hmm. you know, like, and when I say low, like, a hundred horsepower, <laughs> um, and so that really wouldn't move it. It's a six thousand pound vehicle, mm. um, and so it's about a couple thousand pounds more than a stock uh, one ten wagon that you would see on the road. Um, and the gas engines had a little more horsepower, um, but really nothing to allow um, that car to move the way we wanted it to. The other thing it enabled is we could use a modern transmission. Mm -hmm. And, <clears throat> excuse me, um, we've gotten the feedback that um, for certain buyers, we have a certain list of buyers that like a modern feel to it. They really like the the envelope that they're in. Um, they like the feel of it, the way it makes them feel. But they don't want the, you know, it, whether it be automatic or standard, they don't want the old feel of a, standard clicking into uh automatic clicking into place or a standard and fooling around with the the you know the gate that you know may be a little f you know funny to get the the car into gear um this one is push button i noticed so, that right in the center yeah console, right in the middle so you yep. just push boom 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 yeah. so it's not a car for the you know you're not like and i love you know, fast cars and i love i love standards um, but it's not that, that's not the, you know, the feel we were giving. Yeah. We were letting you focus purely on what was outside. And frankly, you know, to be honest, for people to enjoy what they were seeing. Mm -hmm. And so we put that together and Cole designed the entire car. And, um. Good job, by it, the way. <laughs> yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah. It, it came out, yeah. You, you know, you, you, I guess you have to acknowledge or you should acknowledge when you have actually done what you wanted to do. Right. Mm -hmm. And we did it. So the, it's an LS3. That's correct. W what kind of horsepower does it crank up? It does 480 horsepower. Okay. So that's yeah. enough to get it going, yeah. Yeah. Is it had a nice rumble when you guys drove in? Yeah. Okay. We knew you were here. Yeah. 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 Well, I feel like that the way it sits is like the sound goes with that because like obviously you're not blending in with a vehicle like that. So why – sound like you're going to blend in, you know, yeah. you know, I mean, yeah, sure. Somebody might put an EV motor and something like that, but what's the point? I mean, nothing's big yeah. and 
making a statement, might as well make it with that with that engine. So yeah. I think the engine's perfect for it. Thank and, you. You know, the other thing that's really interesting about your story is, I mean, yeah, we, okay, we've seen the truck and it's beautiful. Um, it's where you are, I mean, where you're building these. Talk a little bit about. <laughs> Is I think this is a great part of the story. Um, don't give them the address. No, I'm not. I won't give it keep, out. Keep these guys. We don't want to get them in trouble. But code, <laughs> yeah, get them in trouble yeah. with code enforcement exactly. or anything. But, um, <laughs> but talk about the property where you guys are building these. So um, probably 12 years ago, we bought a property um, west of us where we live in New Hampshire, and it was always intended as um, at that time. I, I probably. That's where I started thinking about I wanted to do something on my own. Uh, I wasn't sure at the time what it was. Was it a brewery? Was it a distillery? Um, and the town was actually in full support of that. <laughs> believe, <laughs> it would be too. Believe but. it or not. And the neighbors were uh, lining up with the resumes. But um, <laughs> it, the timing never worked out. The opportunity wasn't there. So I knew I, I bought it for the intention to do something. Um, the property has a barn and we've renovated. So we have, you know, heat, running water, all those, um, necessities. And, um, so we slowly were fixing it, um, and renovating it to meet some purpose. And it's just the confluence of, you know, the merging of all of these different things of, yeah, we were working on that college, not, you know, being great. You know, I was, I enjoyed my career, um, but it wasn't life fulfilling for me. Um, and so all of these things kind of came together, and it is weird to think back. I had no plan, by the way. You know, there wasn't a plan to say in twelve years you will do all of this. Um, yeah, there was no part of, uh, part of what makes it fun, though, isn't I, it? I guess. Yeah. I, you know, I think a lot of people just thought, "What the hell is he doing?" Uh, fr <laughs> frankly, uh, you know, you're not working on the farmhouse that's in there you're working on the barn okay why and so um I, I i do and i you know how people slide in those comments at cocktail parties of you know what are you doing up there <laughs> shenanigans yeah and uh but my wife knew i was always there and uh so anyway we renovated a barn we're in a barn uh ho old horse barn we had the uh the ceiling of the first floor used to be at seven feet or actually lower because I ducked, so I would say it was probably six feet. And uh, so we had that raised, and uh, we put in a large garage door so we could get any car in. Uh, I think the garage door is, oh, boy, 12 feet wide, 20 feet high, mm. that kind of thing. And uh, so we just bring them in one or two at a time, and that's all we, we, we build is that we build one or two cars at a time. What um, kind of staff? What uh, kind of staffing? You're you've met the staff. That's just it. Us you, just you two. Yep. Wow, that's impressive. That's that's yeah. We um you know we thought for building with family and friends um you know we weren't going to hire people. We were just doing it fun weekends nights. Um, but when we turned you know it into a business, we just we said, well, why are we going to change our model? Mm. Uh, this is what we know. Um, we, we feel we build a great product. Uh, we know the car inside and out. I'm not worrying about if someone has, and inevitably something goes wrong with these cars, um, um, that I know exactly what has been done. And that knowledge didn't leave with someone. Right. Um, and, you know, for us right now, that's a good thing. Uh, we like it. We, we, you know, put our time into them. If we have to travel as we're doing now, uh, we prepare for that, but um, we we enjoy just handcrafting these. Um, if you know people are looking for a cookie cutter defender uh, and looking for you know mass, uh, I guess you know options to choose from. Um, although we can provide the options, uh, we're really focused on exactly what someone wants. So um, sure. you know we built a, a soft top for a gentleman in Upper Michigan. And, um, I mean, it was down to the thickness of the leather that we were discussing. Mm -hmm. and, and that was great um, because we were seeing how it would work in different parts of the car. Uh, ultimately, we found that it wouldn't work in a different part. I was about to say, this is a learning process for you, too, as people come to you with ideas. And, yeah, some yeah, of it was. That and would make we, sense. we had the leather manufacturer actually custom make, custom dye, a thinner leather so we could use it in certain parts of the car because wow. the car is 
if anyone's been in a defender, they're very tight, uh, qu quite tight. And um, so the tolerances to allow another, you know, 16th of an inch uh, for a piece of leather, you know, the, which sounds ridiculous, it's not there. Um, and so you, you do have to understand how each product or each material fits within the car um, because you can end up, you know, creating a car and you can't shut the doors or, mm -hmm. um, you know, everything, the dashboard won't fit together. And we were talking when you, when you guys first arrived, I, you were describing your process and I said, no, it almost sounds like what Singer does with Porsches. Yes. You, you take a, a Land Rover, a basic one, and you strip it down and you build it back up again from scratch. Yeah. So that's what you guys are doing. Yeah. We take every Defender, except for our restorations of North American spec models, which were certain models that or certain car, uh, vehicles that they imported through 93 through 97, um, which people want to keep very original. Um, other than those, we will strip the vehicle down to its chassis. And, um, I, I, you know, we were talking a little bit before someone has asked, we, you know, we get a question, right? You, you buy a car, you spend a lot of money. Well, what, what was its history? What, you know, what's its restoration history? And, and usually behind that question is, you know, is it a piece of junk or not? And, sure. uh, right. Is there Bondo all over the place? Is, mm -hmm. have you band-aided things together that are just going to break on me? And, um, it's a hard question for me to answer. Well, it's easy for me to answer. I don't think they like the answer all the time, but I say it, it doesn't matter because the car comes completely apart yeah. and we inspect every part in that car. So if the chassis is good, we'll use it. We'll go get it galvanized um, to make sure that, you know, the, in, mostly the inner rails are protected. Um, and then we'll build from there. And uh, if a part, so every part in that car, every fastener is new. Uh, every part in the car is either new, rebuilt, or refurbished. Um, and if we look at each other and say, you know, should we keep this part, then it goes. We've made a conscious decision that if we're considering that, then that's not a part we want in the car. If you're even questioning it, yeah. right, it's, it's not worth keeping. It's not, yeah, yeah, it's not what we want to give to our clients. We want to give them the best uh, defender that they can get that meets their lifestyle. And if that means a new part versus the other part, we always look at each other and go, well, well why would we even use that part then? Yeah. Uh, it has to be perfect. And mm -hmm. uh, so essentially the car is, you know, you can't say you're building a new a classic defender. Uh, and now I have to caveat that or qualify that because of the new defenders, but um, <laughs> uh, the new, new defenders, but um, it, we want it to be as close to new as possible. And um, that is what we're building. And, you know, for some people, that is what they want. Oh. So you guys talk about um, like leather for uh, interior for a certain client and, you know, obviously paint. Are you guys doing all that in-house, the paint and the interior? Are you farming some stuff out or how does that work in part of the operation? Yeah, so we have for our upholstery, we have a local craftsman uh, 20 minutes up the road that does all our leather work, all our interior work. And then we work with a shop that's probably five minutes away from us. Uh that paints classic cars. Okay. And he's been teaching me how to do auto body and paint and stuff. So that's been a lot oh, of fun. That's funny because that was the next question I was yeah. going to roll into because it's been a huge topic of discussion um, on our Instagram page uh, where we had a previous guest talk about these restoration trades are dying. Yeah. Right? Yeah, a lot. So painting a car, and this is, goes back to the discussion about having a paint shop in California versus somewhere else where a lot of these people can't do restoration jobs or just stick to insurance work because it's more cost effective and more profitable. Yeah. Um, but the trades, um, less and less people are doing it. So when I hear somebody young saying, oh, I'm learning this. So it's great that you se yeah. segue to that because I feel like that's an important thing to it keep is. going. So that's why I asked, are you guys doing a lot of this stuff yourself? You're not currently, but it sounds like you're about to mm -hmm. do do the work yourself. So you have more one QC over everything, right? And offer your client something a little bit a better product because you guys have all the control over it, right? Yep. Yeah, we um, so uh, the um, upholsterer is a third generation upholsterer. It, his family's been doing it for uh, I forgot how long Randy's been doing it, but it's been a long time. His father's father started, 
um, he can't find anyone to work. Um, yeah, no one wants to get into it. Wow. So we, um, and thankfully he's, he's, you know, on the younger side and um, relative to some of these tradesmen. Mm -hmm. And um, so we, we work with him and we were very thankful. Um, he just does a stellar job. We actually get a lot of calls, uh, especially at car shows. Would you, you know, do our interior for us? Wow. And we just don't have the time. And, and frankly, <laughs> it's horrible, but I don't want them taking his time. Sure. Um, Fair so, enough. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, so that's the upholstery piece. The painting piece, um, we just have a great guy. Um, he is just down to earth. Um, frankly, I'm not sure. I forget how we met him. Um, <laughs> it's a while ago. It yeah. was a while ago. And so Bill has been really has has been a father figure to Cole when it comes to this trade, and um, mm -hmm. I I I think he's bothered by you know what you were mentioning, Gabe, that people aren't going into the trade, and yeah. he, he has a uh, student now who's helping him, but he uh, stopped all of his collision work and now does just restoration. Wow. Well, that's the that's opposite, opposite of what, yeah. Yeah, well, we, that's opposite of what we've been hearing. Yeah. So. He well, got I, fed up I, with I, the insurance companies. Yeah. Okay, wow. Yeah. See, we've yeah. also heard that yeah. too. People complain about how the insurance companies are squeezing the shops, which is in turn squeezing the customers. That's you know? right. Yeah. And he's tired of it. And he's at the age where he can be tired of it. Mm. And he's on a slow glide path. He's so probably doing what he wants to do. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He is. And so he's, you know, in, in, you know, selfishly for us, Cole's learning, you know, it's like boot camp, you know, he's, <laughs> that's awesome. It, you know, learning how to do all of this because we can see very clearly that is the next thing we will bring in. And those are the only two things we don't do ourselves. Our paint, um, we didn't want to, um, we didn't have the experience in that and it is just an art. Oh yeah. And upholstery just just you know same thing. Yeah. Um and you know it, eventually I can see us having to go into um into upholstery and leather. Yeah. I mean it's such an awesome thing to especially when you're basically you guys are coach building really. You're building cars from scratch. You just you're just starting with a chassis yeah. and a body that's already kind of already done and you guys are probably refinishing it but yep. you know um picking up the interior uh, or upholstery and the painting thing um it's such so refreshing to hear somebody like yourself as young as you are um picking that up because i feel like you know that's always going to be a thing you know with older cars mm -hmm. especially you know and yeah. picking up that trade i think is very very important so i'm curious so if it's just the two of you how long does it take you from beginning to end to crank out just one vehicle. So one car, like five to seven months, depending on oh, like that's shipping fast. times. That's pretty and good. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. I was expecting and, to hear and, longer. And but you guys only do one car at a time. One to two. two. Yeah. So you guys can stay on it every day. Yes. Basically. Yeah. Exactly. And then, um, do you? Um, what's the the how you working with your clients? You know, they obviously they have the, some preferences, but. Overall, it's your it's a man's car that you guys are building. So, is there a, a line between um, what the customer wants and what you guys would do? Like, you know, say, like, hey, I want to, uh, you know, you know, I want it to be pink with like, you know, cow cowhide seats and uh, le or, you know, or machine gun turrets on the side. Yeah, of I mean, it. is that something you guys will do, or you guys will only stay within a certain realm of design? We'll do whatever the client wants. Okay, but yeah. so long as it's the chassis that you guys are, as, as long as it's a Defender. Got it. And um, I, I find that whatever choices they make, although we haven't done pink. So. <laughs> Hopefully you don't there have you go, to. new idea. No offense to pink, but no. <laughs> no, 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 no offense to pink. I like pink. But, uh, um, gee, you got me thinking there, Gabe. <laughs> Just how does that look? We can't wait yeah. to see your pink defender Mary when Kay. you roll it out next year. <laughs> We're going to see I'm Mary pink, Kay. Pink six yeah. Six. yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> boy, you really threw me with that one. <laughs> Uh, in a good way, in a good way. Uh, uh, but um, in the end, these things always look like defenders. Um, you know, some people put body kits on them to make them look wider, have a more aggressive stance. Uh, if someone wanted to do it, I think they look nice. Uh, it's not my preference. Um, but uh, from an exterior standpoint, uh, we do lifts. We don't lift the car. We do uh, certain wheels, tires. Um, other accessories for the for the defender, um, and there are there are also companies that won't do 
any of that. They keep them, you know, traditional. Mm. Um, in the interior, uh, you know, we will do uh, two different dashboards um, that def- that uh, Land Rover made. Um, we will. Uh, we have not. I, I should say we will not, but we have not, um, and we have not provided the option to change that. Um, you know, do a completely different. Be- in part, mostly because these cars are, and you asked the question earlier and Cole answered and, and I didn't say anything. I kind of lost the thought, but these cars are made, and I said the <clears throat> tight tolerances, but in addition, everything has to fit where it has to fit. There there really isn't a lot of room to, to um, freeform mm. with, well, I want a new dashboard. And I guess, you know, you can, and I, I've, I have seen them. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not stupid to say that you can't figure that out, but you really are given a very specific space in which you can do everything. Um, and it's, you know, and I, I, I feel it's different than a lot of cars only because the older cars just have so much room in them. Mm. Um, you know, there's so much room in the interior you can take from this, borrow from this and, you can in the Defender. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the heat comes in in one spot. <laughs> now, you could move it, and, and I'm not saying that people haven't probably, but I start to go, why? Yeah. Um, and so it's things like that that, you know, in, in the 6x6, six six, I guess, where I was going with that, is that that car outside is no different than any other Defender up to its rear door. Everything is at its same mounting spot. Uh, everything is uses all the same fasteners, all of the same pieces. All we've done is kind of trick the car, if you will, into thinking, uh, or we've used the same mounting points, and we've duplicated it with another axle. So we just kind of cut it, allow you know that additional axle to come in, and then we use the stock rear on it. So. If you don't do that, then you're re-engineering that car. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and I think for big off-road enthusiasts, that's fine. Um, I don't like to play with my client's safety. And um, I'm not, uh, Cole and I are not engineers. And, and, and really don't feel that we should be changing um, uh, those parts of the car that would su- substantially uh, alter it from being a defender. I think in the end, well, there's a reason why people like them. Well, I mean, that ex- they love them. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. So, you know, it's almost the, who am I to do that? Yeah. Sure. So it's almost like you're kind of paying uh, homage or respect to the original car being built a certain way, customizing it to your client's tastes, but still it is a defender at the end of the in day. In the right? end, it's a defender. Yeah. I it's, think that's the part that kind of drew me in the most is that, you, the everything you did to make the six by six was with OEM parts. I think that's so cool. You it didn't is, have to yeah. fabricate any of these things or hope that the guy who fabricated did a good job. It's no, it came from the factory. If you don't like it, talk to Land Rover. <laughs> right? right, and in with the six by six, you know that we use two factory tub the tubs, rear tubs, to make the bed. It's obviously longer. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can't buy that long tub from them, but we do use, uh, you know, factory parts in putting it together. We, we do get comments of, and I've seen, you know, I guess I've, I've fallen into the trap of, you know, looking at what haters are, you know, have posted and, you know, one person was, well, you'll never be able to repair it. And, you know, you can, will never have find the parts. And there is one part that is made only by one company in this world. And that's the six by six diff. And even then you could find another one. Um, but every other part is either factory or, you know, aftermarket part that is just out there with every other defender. So mm-hmm. it's, it really isn't using a lot of crazy esoteric parts. It's uh, using the same parts, just using in slightly different ways. So oh, you bring up a – oh, sorry. No, I was, I was going to ask Cole because it sounds yeah. like you do a lot of the hands-on with this. Mm-hmm. Um, what is your favorite part of the vehicle to work on as you're working on it? As we're building it, probably getting the rolling chassis together, dropping the engine in, putting the axles on, building the differentials and building the axles. It's kind of like seeing it take shape. Right? Yeah, it's exactly. Like, yeah. yeah. That's my favorite part. That makes part. sense. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, I was going to go back to the whole parts thing. Um, do you guys find it uh, difficult to source parts, especially OEM parts, since it's such an old, older vehicle or anything? Are people making repops of this stuff or? So it, it depends on the part. Yeah, during COVID was really difficult. Sure. <laughs> Everything was yeah, difficult. That, yeah, was, yeah. that was horrible. But yeah. right now it's it's not too bad. There's a lot of aftermarket companies uh, popping up for like body panels and stuff. And mm -hmm. some work, some don't. And we, we found the ones that are honestly better than OEM parts. So... It's it's not bad finding finding parts for the cars. It's a sign of popularity when you start seeing that many aftermarket parts showing up. But you're right; you got to sift through it to find out which ones will do the job the way it needs to be done. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. We we've seen it. I, I, you know, we're, we haven't been in it long enough to say we've seen it all, but we've seen a lot. Yeah, and um, and it doesn't matter the company, Land Rover's part, another company's part. Yeah, they've all screwed up. Mm. Uh, we've had, um. We had a part of a tub. We were replacing the right, left rear, what we would call a quarter panel here um, in a car, but it was the left side of the outer tub, a rear tub. And its supports were put in the wrong place. And that's important for us because we're doing different things with seat belts on them in the, in the rear. And they were in the wrong place. Wow. And uh, I went back to the retailer that we got it from because... Yeah, it happens all the time for them. Oh, wow. And so yeah. it, it, it's not just, you know, and I don't say that to dig at Land Rover. I, I say it in a way to say that it, it is amazing what, you know, imperfections that you find even in the, um, you know, the original company. But we have found, as Cole was mentioning, we have found a number of suppliers um, that are seeing that in, you know, <clears throat> so the, the Defender went out of production in, I'm losing it. 2016, I think. Um, it was so, you know, in the United States, we only got them from 93 through 97. But for the the world, they got them through 1983 to 2016. And by and large, they did not change uh, parts. Now, mm -hmm. there are there are some, so people listening, I, I'm aware that there were some, some wholesale changes. But by and large, it did not change. And uh, so you you... One, you do have that mass market of people from eighty three to twenty sixteen. That's a that's a big time window mm. of a lot of vehicles that yeah. want parts. But two, and I'm not an authority on the rules of keeping parts around, but I've heard anecdotally that you keep them around fifteen years. That the company is you know obligated to to provide those. So you can quickly do the math that in twenty thirty one, Land Rover can say goodbye. And in some of those parts, I actually got stopped making in twenty, uh, excuse me, two thousand and six, when uh, Ford was uh, owned Land Rover. Mm. So those are starting to go away already from the the, the factory. Mm. Uh, that was a monumental shift in the Defender. It's probably, I think, it's the biggest shift in the Defender from a parts perspective. Uh, in two thousand and six, when they re, you know, they tried to modernize it. Um, new dashboard uh, engine, things like that. And the Puma era, which it is referred to, is um, that the car is, although a lot the same, it shows the most difference in any kind of, um, what would you call that, revamp or restyling since 1983. So the parts, my point is, the parts are disappearing mm. from the factory. Mm. And so I think companies, you know, smart people in the world, they see that people want them. It's a popular car. They were made for a long time. You can make a, uh, you know, a front uh, fender, we would call, so a front wing for the car. And it's the same for all of those cars. Mm. So why not? Why shouldn't we make them ourselves? Yeah. So there are a lot of people. And, and to Cole's point, we're finding they're starting to make them better. Yeah. Um, both uh, quality uh, um, from a consistency standpoint, but also the material. Um, and the example, and it, it's kind of a silly example, but we just use a tub that has a millimeter thicker. So most of uh, the tub is two millimeters, the aluminum. And we found someone who uses three. Now, if you think about the percentage, it's huge, 50% thicker. Yeah. Uh, weight, weight. And, yeah, yeah. But uh, fitment. Boy, it, it fits like a glove, but it's rigid. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it won't bend as much and it's not, um, you know, they're actually pretty fragile cars or they're, they're not all aluminum, but the skin is pretty much all aluminum. Mm. So uh, it can dent easily. Yeah. And stress, uh, Any stress fractures, if you don't get a little bit of flex in them, if they're too stiff, have you had that problem? No, no, or we haven't no? seen that. Okay. It's, it's uh, that'll be, uh, it's an interesting question as, as you know, the Land Rover does drop the parts. If people try to, well, we're, what, right. We were talking about, they're trying to innovate, but they're not using the original, original parts. So does it, do you guys ever hear from Land Rover about what you guys are doing? Have you heard from the no. company? No. No. Mm-hmm. Okay. That could be a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I, it's like, oh man, these guys I, are making better, better vehicles than we are in, I, in the U.S. I, I equate it to the old the uh, anecdote that I've heard of um, Bud spills, you know, more beer than the craft brew industry. So <laughs> I, I don't think we do no. do enough to. Uh, even concern them. Well, and I was thinking it would be more a compliment, like, hey, you know, like what you guys are doing. I would. Well, I, I cannot credit it to us, and, and I'm not, but I have uh, seen that they saw the popularity of people taking these old defenders and restoring them, and they've started, and uh, I'm not very familiar with this part of it. Are you? Yeah. Uh, they did it themselves. They did a company-owned restoration business. Oh, and a lot and, of big yeah. manufacturers are starting to do it. Porsche's yeah, done it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Right, right. I mean, basically, you can send them an old Land Rover or whatever it is, and they'll strip it down and rebuild it factory, and you you get the credit for it and everything. And can you tell us a little bit about who your customers are? I'm really curious. Like, what kind of person – you guys must know your demographics pretty well because you're so small, and, you know, you you have a relationship with each customer. Yep. It's not just comes in over the Internet, let's build it. You yep. know, tell, tell us a little bit about that. I'm curious. Um, our customers are, A, um, most of them car lovers. Um, and, and probably all we have, um, we have billionaires, um, that use these cars. And actually one of my favorite stories is that we have a customer who has a car collection that would rival, I I believe anyone in the country. And, um, he wrote to us and said the cars use the most in his whole collection. In fact, it doesn't sit in the kind of the car garage. It's it's in the garage. <laughs> the garage it, it's garage. not posing. It's it, out in the road. It's out and it yeah. works. Uh, it's nice. top gets off. It tops comes off uh, right. Actually, we just heard from his mechanic. Top came off the other day, and it won't go on until winter. And he's, <laughs> that's awesome. And wow. So uh, they use the vehicles. Um, others, um, a lot of um, uh, we. So in New England, we have uh, Cape Cod, Nantucket, and. Um, uh, Martha's Vineyard, which I can't compare to here, so maybe you can help me on your kind of your areas that are Napa Valley, Orange County, Orange, I, don't Orange, I don't know. I don't know. They're, they're, they're very question. seaside vacation. La Jolla. Oh, La Jolla. Yeah. La Jolla. La Jolla. Okay. okay. Jolla. Dana Point. Santa Barbara. Maybe Santa, yeah, Barbara. Santa Barbara. Yeah. Okay. Santa Barbara. Would be yep. Sounds. And 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 their clients that just want to use it occasionally when they're at that house, um, and they want something that they can go out with Mm -hmm. and it's fun um it's usually not a daily driver for them um um, because they just they want something different that's the attraction of the car that it is something different it looks uh different um you know um they have they have plenty of cars it's that it's it's that it gives them the feeling of this kind of iconic four by four without having to get, you know, overly dirty. Mm. And, you know, for us, that's important because we service all of our cars. And if there's any minute problem, we fly to our client and we fix them. Oh, wow. Um, Because, you know, if I think about it, if it were me, if I spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on a car, I expect it to work. The reality is Land Rover did not build these to a specification that they are working as well as modern standards. And um, so, and we use the same, you know, the same parts that they were built with. So uh, we don't claim to make the parts any better than, than, than they were used and they, they do break. And uh, so we just fix them. And uh, that, that kind of, I'm kind of going around your question, not talking about specific clients, but 
that's our client that you know man or woman wants uh, a car that's different wants to use it around town but not all of the time um and built to their and taste built yeah and we like to say built exactly to the lifestyle okay yeah um do you know we build so uh soft tops for people that are in beach communities that want the top off like i was mentioning uh for people that are uh, wanting to use it more in ski country and winter weather a hard top uh and customizing it that way uh we talked to a client in um orlando and he wanted something large i don't know if anyone of you have been in a four-door uh land rover uh defender mm -mm. the the back room the back seat uh is not built for the the for really for for anyone <laughs> uh it doesn't have a lot of room uh leg room and it's it's hard to get in um due to i guess uh, the approach angle i would say uh, based on the way you have to move your head in and get into the seat you kind of have to do it all in one motion there isn't a lot of i can step up and then slide in mm. um and so we built them uh well we talked it we uh still talking to them but um, a 130 station wagon. So it's, you know, that, and they have that today. But um, my point is, is that we build, you know, we he wanted to get in the car effort, effortlessly, his kids. And I said to him, well, it's not a 110 wagon that you want. We can build you. They never were built, and we can build them a 130 wagon, which looks the same, but ha is longer. Mm. Thus, it gives us room to play with where the seat position is in the second row. And so we love that, you know, when, again, it doesn't change, it's a defender, but it serves their purpose of children that need, uh, and I, I think one of his children needs uh, extra help getting in the car and could more easily uh, approach the car and, and use it and feel comfortable in it. Hmm. And so that's, that's hmm. what we're trying to do. We're not trying to build, uh, you know, I look at some of our competitors' websites and then they're great cars. But you build, you know, you kind of pick a menu. And I think that's easy for a lot of people. That's, mm -hmm. you know, in some ways we give maybe too many choices. But I'd rather help that family that needs a child that has a child that needs extra time and extra help to get in the car and be able to get in that car and be a part of that than mass producing a car for someone. Sure. So I have to follow up with yeah. the obvious question. Yeah. What kind of budget do I need to purchase one of your vehicles? Dan wants to have one. you build one. Dan <laughs> wants one. Oh, I know, I know I could never afford <laughs> one, but I'm just curious, just because everyone's going to be thinking that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you see the car, it's amazing looking. It's obviously not inexpensive, but yep. what what are we talking? So for the six by six, around four hundred thousand. And then for a ninety and a one ten, which are just smaller variants, and I can explain them, but um, uh, around two to four hundred thousand dollars, and that really is driven by quality of finishes, both interior and exterior. I won't tell you what the paint on that cost. It was <laughs> not not painting, paint, paint. Oh, as a yeah. noun. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah, it was ridiculous. Um, so the finishings are huge. The engine is huge. Um, the engines are not cheap. Um, transmissions are not cheap. Mm -hmm. So again, the choice of the drivetrain, and then obviously on that car, the extra axle. Well, and you were telling me on the paint, it's an Aston Martin? It's Aston Martin Xenon Gray. It's, and it's beautiful. So I could see why it was expensive. We know why yeah. Aston Martin, uh, Aston yeah. Martin paint's not going to be and cheap, no, right? No. <laughs> I, you could, you know, I, in fact, this is one of those things I, I want to say, guess. <laughs> You'd never guess. It, it would just, it would floor you. How many it, gallons did it take to paint that? I think two. I forget. Though. Two of color. Two, yeah, two of color. And then yeah. Clear, you probably got a couple of layers of clear on there, I would imagine. Three layers yeah, of clear. I think there's three or four coats, yeah. Oh, wait, I forgot to mention the first thing that I was drawn to when you guys pull up, the carbon fiber hood. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. So that was your idea? Cool. Mm -hmm. um, how did... Somebody makes that? Yeah. So while we were in England 2019, we went to uh, a massive Land Rover uh, show. And one of the suppliers there had one like on their car that they were showing. I was like, well, where did you guys get this? <laughs> yeah. And they're like, oh, we, we make a handful of them each year. And we're like, we have to get that done. Yeah. On that color, that build, yes. that 
because usually carbon fiber to me is like okay, you just slap a bunch of, and you said it's not a wrap kind of thing, you know. <laughs> but that's the kind of connotation carbon fiber has gotten lately, yeah. where people just slap it on anything for no. They put it, I put it on the, my Camry. I'm like, dude, why'd you do that? But on a build like that, you're like, okay, there's, you know, it's got this kind of like military classy feel to it. Yeah. yeah. So the carbon to me is like adds that little bit of touch, but I didn't notice it right away because it blended into the color yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it fits bit. nice. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, yeah. oh, that's a nice, nice touch. So when I was knocking it, because I was exactly trying to find out is this real carbon or not. <laughs> Obviously, you know, I don't want to be rude, but yeah, but you like, can't be the first person who who's wondered if that's if that's what it was. Yeah, because yeah, they do. You know, it's yeah. everywhere. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, right. It's, well, you, you get when walking around and looking at it, there's so many nice subtle touches. And one of the things, the 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 spotlights at the top, fog mm -hmm. lights, the way you incorporated them into the roof beautiful the winch um i'm trying to think of, i'm trying to go back what other i'm trying to think about how much that paint exhaust, costs right now the i'm going back to back coming out the back it was yeah it was really i want to nice take a you. guess i want to take a guess because i know somebody's listening right now going oh you know it's like is well is it a house of color paint or is it a factory paint factory factory paint so it's gotta be i'm gonna go thirty thousand in paint for two gallons of paint yeah it was only because you built it up so much. Okay. Uh, you, you, went, you went high. I, you went way high. I figured I would. I, was gonna say, I, was I built it too much. Then. <laughs> I was going to say 8,000. You're closest. 8,000. Yeah. Okay, 8,000. Okay. Yeah. I, was, I, I figured Aston Martin, and he's like talking about how expensive it is. I'm like, shit, it's got to be really yeah. expensive. So you just yeah. went straight for the I gusto. Went, I went for the gusto. Totally. That was like a, a, how, how much to replace a Veyron tire. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. 30,000. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys ever get customers that just want you to do a like a uh, original restoration to the way it was exactly from the factory like no aftermarket like i want it like when i bought it off the showroom floor kind of thing yeah so that was the one we we just finished it was a nas spec and he just wanted it back to original he's had it what close to 20 years now mm -hmm. i think and just being a new england car it was just completely rotting out so we replaced his bulkhead the uh, chassis, the rear tub, the doors, and a few other pieces just because they were all rotted out, and we just restored it completely back to factory spec. Wow. Yeah. Do you, now, do you enjoy that, or do you enjoy doing what you guys do more? <laughs> I think I, I, know. On the spot I think here. I know. I think I know. I, was gonna say, I like building, like, the 6x6 six six board. I figured yeah. you would. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. You're, you're a power guy. You're an engine guy, right? Yeah. Yeah. So – um, have you guys um, only put the outside of the Land Rover engines? Have you are there any other engines that you guys have put into these things other than the LS or uh, Cummins and then yeah. the, just the factory Dan likes that. diesels? Yeah. yeah, that's pretty cool. We were looking into doing electric, and I think we'll end up doing that soon. Someone's got to be yeah. bound to want one. Yeah. You know, probably yeah. in California, maybe Montecito. Someone saw your car in Montecito and was like, oh, hey, "Maybe I'll take an electric one of those." A surprise for us. So we were asked a number of times. And I always said it's not when it's you know or not if it's when. Um, so we did some uh, you know, research and we got very close with the company. But the the problem with the net price tag was I could buy three LS engine and transmissions. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it was kind of like the conversation I had with my roofer the other day. You know, between asphalt and metal. I could buy two and a half roofs, you know, and frankly, I'm not living two and a half roofs that are guaranteed for 30 years each. So, <laughs> you know, I started saying, well, why am I going to spend that money? And, and we we felt, and, and I we tested it with some clients, that we started getting the feedback of, you can put three LS engines in before, you know, I kind of pay the same amount as, as the electric mm -hmm. and you know and and i think people feel that they want to do that but we're just not seeing people putting the both together willing to spend the money and feeling compelled to yeah. do it mm -hmm. and especially in a vehicle like that i mean i get it when somebody throws it in like their c10 pickup and it's kind of a cool little you know novelty thing but you get in a vehicle like that and there's kind of like this visceral thing you know where you have like this balance of luxury but also i want to hear the engine you know there's like you know driving it because obviously driving electric especially off-road or whatever it's a different feeling i'm not saying it's better or worse it's different when you have an electric powertrain versus a gas powertrain or you know yeah i would think if we if we do one or i should say again when we do one um i think it's going to be a very uh standard two-door four-door 
station wagon. Maybe it has a soft top, um, but it's for a family that's not going to travel far in it. And they, and my guess too is they already have electric cars. Yeah, um, this is not going to be the first one. But, yeah, but that's me. I, you know, I, I don't know. We yeah. ha- we maybe it'll be asked. the pink one. It, maybe it'll be the <laughs> pink electric. Pink electric <laughs> Defender. The Barbie. The Don't Barbie forget the version. cowhide interior. Don't forget the cowhide <laughs> interior. That, that it, does it's got to be the Barbie version for, you know, <laughs> Margot Robbie or something, right? <laughs> oh, man. How much fun are you guys having? Oh, I'm having a blast. You keyed tell. in a, on a couple of these even before we started recording. Yeah. About family and yeah. life is short and, um, and, the, and how... Uh, gratifying it was to build a car for a family that had a, a need for a child to get mm. into the car and stuff like that. Um, and it, I just realized something. You guys are doing father and son projects for your clients. You guys are building like what a father and son would build in their garage for yes. themselves. You're building for your clients. Yes. You're off. Mm-hmm. I've never really heard of that. I mean, I've heard of father and sons working together, but you know, they've got staff, they've got thing, they turn it into a business and I'm, I, yes, is a, is a business for you guys, but yeah, it sounds like that has like a uh, there's much more meaning to you because you don't have to do this. It sounds like you want to do this, um, and you're spending time with your son. And we do, we do. Uh, I, you know, I haven't had any of those um, life altering moments, uh, thankfully. Um, but it's something that it just it's uh, it's fulfilling. Yeah. And um, I don't know how it sounds to others when I say that. But it it has a whole slew of meaning to me, and uh, I enjoy every day that that we we do this. Um, I get the, I, I I think it's fair to say we're closer than we have been, and we're a very close family. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not like you know our children always come home for holidays, and and we see everyone we get together. But there's a level of bond now. Um, I don't always care for it because it usually is. Um, some four letter words or some colorful words are now directed at me as <laughs> a, as a father would never be acceptable <laughs> uh, to me but uh it, it it it's a blast we get to travel like we are today um we get to um share our story um and and we do we really enjoy it i think we could have taken the business a few different ways um and right now i think it's it where it should be yeah and it's more fun than a brewery. Uh, well, easy. I don't. Yeah, yeah, that depends how you. Or is that uh, coming next? So it went to man's brewery, right? Ex- maybe right next door to man's motor or company. distillery. He said distillery, possibly. Yeah. You know, we like the too. hard hard stuff too. Yeah. yeah. But um, Cole, how how is it working with your dad? It's great. Yeah. Yeah. Do you uh, you guys ever kind of butt head? I know people are wondering. Oh yeah. yeah. So oh I'm, yeah. So I don't mean to like. You know, flame throw. Well, yeah, flame yeah, throw. But flame I'm gonna do it because okay, because right. I know I would ask this question if I'm listening to this. I know I would ask this question. Who could put together a better defender? Ooh, oh that that was that was, oh, easy. was easy. Yeah, it was way easy, easy. Uh, he, because of all the special training he's been getting on the on, on the page. Yeah, yeah. No, he Cole knows these cars, and and I do too. But he knows these cars to a level, and that's why we decide to specialize. We get a question a lot of, well. Why not others? Broncos, you know, uh, Scouts and F, uh, Land Cruisers, Toyota Land Cruisers, and um, we like the fact that we know these cars inside and out. Um, I'm not trying to be a general restoration business. No offense, but that's not what we wanted to do. Um, and uh, and I think that was influenced a lot by. The, the two brothers that we met in England and they've been doing this and that's all they do. And, um, so, uh, we enjoy, yeah, doing that specializing in, but Cole knows these cars inside and out mm-hmm. and, you know, is l- always listening to them saying, Ooh, that doesn't sound right. Mm-hmm. Got the ear. Yeah. Things like mm-hmm. that. Um, so when you guys butt heads a little bit, is it over something creative? No, it's okay. usually something that's not right. Okay. It's, you know, hasn't gone. Well, there's only two people you could point fingers at, right? Well, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's <exactly>. the problem. <laughs> <laughs> can't yeah. blame it on it. Can't find a tool. Whose fault is that, right? Yeah. Trust me. Where's the 10 millimeter yeah. socket? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you had it last. <laughs> yeah. Where where was it? So um, your business, you're saying that you don't do restorations in general um, and you're focused on 
the defender. Do you feel like that's part of the success of your business is being niche, being the defender guys, being instead of trying to do things in general? Because I'm starting to see this not just on the car world, but everywhere, especially on our social medias, is that they always say, you know, everybody's be be niche, be focused on something because people want and get good at it and get good at it yeah. and stop, you know. Don't go chasing waterfalls, yeah, basically, you know, yeah, yeah, trying to please the masses because you're never going to please everybody. Instead, just please the people that you you know, you know, it seems that that you guys, I mean, I can't get no more niche than defenders from this year. You guys aren't doing 2024 defenders, obviously. Yeah. So it seems to me that part of the success of your business, I'm just guessing here, is because you guys focus only on those things. Maybe that's a reason why you've been the successful. Interesting question. I, I, I don't, you know, obviously I don't know because we didn't take the other path. Um, I do know it was never, it was, it quickly became um, apparent to us that we wanted to focus on a car. Uh, we wanted to be the best at it. We didn't want to do it. We wanted to excel in it. Mm. Um, and it, you know, I, I guess, you know, listening to that, people will say, well, aren't you smart enough to know two cars? Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, so, so at the, at the risk of making myself sound like an idiot, um, no, yeah. uh, you know, I, I, we know everything that, you know, and not everything cause we're learning every day, but we know a lot of what these cars take, how to build them. Um, how did what fits in them, what does not, and really for our clients, most importantly, if there's a problem, how to fix it mm. and where a problem might be. And yeah. um, uh, we just find that that level of expertise we enjoy. We've developed a supply chain around that. Um, we, you know, our craftsmen, the, our painter and our uh, interior gentlemen um, know exactly what they're do, you know, what to do with these cars. Uh, it, it might sound funny, but you've got to get used to a defender. Um, the parts are different. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, a, pa a paint person that's used to um, painting perfectly flat body panels, you're not going to paint one. Mm -hmm. um, uh, someone who's used to doing elaborate uh, upholstery work uh, with thicker materials we are talking about earlier, you're not going to get to do it. Mm -hmm. And so we, we want to, we've always been the type um, that want to know everything about something as deep as we can get. And um, so that back to, I think maybe uh, the original question is that's, that led us down the path. Mm. I don't think, um, in fact, I know um, that's what drives us. It's not, are we selling? Are we um, wildly successful? Are we doing the most cars? Uh, we do it for, you know, selfishly, our clients that want these and want the best. And frankly, we enjoy it. So, uh, and, and you know, God willing, I'm, I'm in a position that we can do that. And uh, I think it comes through in our quality. That's cool. Yeah. 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 They're getting a signature car every time you guys put one out. It's... Since you guys are literally the only ones that touch it, yes, you know, outside of your impulsor and a painter, but who are really part of your group, I think that's pretty awesome. Yeah, it is, you know, and I think they appreciate that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, I would. I mean, who wouldn't want their own custom build and custom service department? Basically, I <laughs> yep. mean, have tools will travel if something yeah. breaks. Right? I mean, that's yeah. what you're yeah. paying for. I mean, I think that's well, quality and value right there. Yeah. Well, I we've found and we got feedback that a lot of people can't find people to fix them yeah they don't want to touch them yeah um they're not easy cars um they're, if you don't know what you're doing either even, even though conceptually they're quite simple actually um they're very difficult in practicality to put together and take or take apart and put together um so you know that's just part of the package you get that you don't have to worry about that either mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. i like that any other questions for the mans before they go back to New Hampshire, and I, where it's cold, and I, they just had I've, snow. I, I was going to say one other one other thing. Tell us a little bit about you know what's it like to have a small business in New Hampshire, especially something so niche, tightly focused, and so on. And the car culture in New Hampshire. What is that? Because we don't we don't we're Californians. What do we know about New Hampshire, right? Um, 
The call, I'd say overall, just like New England, the call, call, car culture is very good going to a bunch of like concourse shows and all the collector shows and stuff. Uh, people really appreciate the defenders. You see quite a lot of them near the coasts and stuff, but yeah, it's good. I think what, what I know about that part of the country in the car world is what you see on like Wayne Carini. Mm-hmm. Isn't his shop yeah. based up in that it, part of the country? It is. We yeah. see them all the time. Yeah. So you see his show, and then he takes us to sh- you don't see a lot shows of, in that area. A lot of Hondas with fart cans in the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's some, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no yeah, offense that's to a Honda California guy. California thing, yeah, yeah. 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 No, there, it, it seems uh, car culture is very strong, and, and we see people of all ages um, that participate in these shows, and it's amazing the variety of cars that we see, too. Mm-hmm. Um uh, we we tend to uh, because of our price point, we tend to be at like Cole was saying, concourse shows, and so we're a little, you know, our experience with that is a little skewed towards yeah, uh, those sure. types of larger shows and and um, more um, the the bigger gatherings. But um, but we do go to car shows, and we see a variety of cars. Um, we usually see more muscle and sport. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't, I, at least from what we've uh, seen, we don't, I actually like being in here. We see a lot of different cars and um, don't see, I don't see a lot of low riding cars. I was going to ask about that. I was uh, curious because low, low riding, if I'm not mistaken, started here in yes, Southern California, so it did. Yeah. like LA. after the yeah. war. It did. Yeah. And it did. Uh, it's, it's spreading um, all over the country, but it's definitely heavily based you know, or biased out here. Yeah. Um, but there are some East Coast guys. It's just harder too because low rider guys don't want to go out in the wintertime. And well, I was going to say that I, you know, I don't, th- and I don't want to sound stupid, but um, our roads are just not in shape for a car that travels that true. low. Yeah. True. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, right now there's, even though it's starting to warm up, the, you know, the, the roads are a mess because of all the frosties during the winter and the, yeah. you know, freezing thawing cycles. Um, there's sand everywhere, you know, so you're going to get your car sandblasted. You know, mm-hmm. it's bad enough when you're up a foot, much less being down right at the action. Right. So, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, we don't, I, I, I don't see, see that. Um, and, you know, but it's, it's not to say it's not around. We're not in, um, every, every car show. We, we, we do tend to focus, uh, only, you know, really because of time. Yeah. Again, we go back to yeah, it's cool that it's only two of us. It's only two of us. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah. You know, so we're doing everything. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, clean the toilet and <laughs> and build cars. Yeah. And uh, so uh, we don't have a lot of time, uh, unfortunately, to go to uh, a lot of car shows outside of the ones that we're participating in. Yeah. Have you guys ever shown a car at SEMA or brought a car to SEMA? We have not. We, we have not done a car show uh, west of the Mississippi. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, came to West of Tulsa. This is the first. <laughs> yeah, this is this is the yeah exactly. The, this is the first actually car that we've shipped uh, out here oh, wow. to the West Coast. Yes. Wow. Well, Interesting. We'll, have, well, Scott will campaign it through all the cars yeah. and coffee and car that, shows while it's yeah. here. Scott Rulo. So it will it will be at a car show right. soon. So yeah. we may be out here more um, more often. But uh, we have because we're a small company, we have focused our time, money, and effort on the east coast no it makes sense there yeah. i feel like there's a lot of people like like you guys um who are thinking about or wanting to do what you guys have done i think it's very inspiring you know you quit or retire your day job and say you know we're going for it uh, and i'm gonna do it with my son or my daughter or whoever what advice would you give to somebody that's thinking about it or wants to do it and feels like what you guys are doing is something that they want to do too what would advice that you give to them to help encourage them if they wanted to do that guess for me, it would be don't be afraid to ask people, like, questions. Because I've asked tons of people just, like, if it comes to, like, rebuilding differentials or, like, transmissions and stuff. So many people are willing to help and teach and, like, guide you through some some things that you have questions with. And that helped me a lot, actually being able to, like, build the cars from the ground up like that for the certain things I didn't know at the time, mm. how to do those mm-hmm. things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, and I think for any young person – um, and we were talking about the trades kind of di- dying. Um, so many people, so many people we meet are willing to help Cole. And it's not to say they say, David, go away. You know, it's not, <laughs> they're rude to me. But, you know, you, you do see that natural pull of, 
uh, adults wanting to transfer the knowledge to someone. Mm. And I think they're just hungry to do it. So mm-hmm. Cole gets, you know, it, Cole, you know, rebuilds our differentials, uh, you know, all of the, the axle components. And uh, we've had some very nice people just keep doing it with him and work with him and, and do that. And they were more than happy to share the knowledge. And they're, and I, I don't, I'm not sure he's ever been, you know, declined the call. They pick up the phone. They want to talk to them. That's awesome. Uh, that's great. I think that's great advice. You know, ask a question. The the wealthiest man I've ever met in my lifetime um, said the smartest people in the world ask the most questions. Hmm. And I thought I'll never forget that because how else are you going to know if you don't ask, right? Yeah. yeah. And it takes you know. It, and you learn by experience and unless you have a ton of experience you're not going to have the answer and you know you can look online and it's a great resource but and, and maybe this is just the old school part of me talking but having that conversation with people um you know we we talk to everyone we see in those shops and uh, in fact we we met the owner of the um um, one of the transmission shops that we work with and we Cole and him just started talking and he doesn't even work there anymore. His, his nephew runs the business. Wow. And so the, yeah, the, yeah, there is just the, uh, that would be the advice that I give. And I think that that's spot on, um, for, you know, folks that aren't as young strap in. Um, it's not easy. Yeah. Uh, we sold, uh, our first car, um, it, it wasn't literally overnight, but it was very easy. Um, it's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it ceased to be easy. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's a lot of work. Um, it, it's a lot of, um, um, it's a lot of faith in that you, you can do it. And um, I do value people's feedback that say we have, and I thank all of you for that our cars are, are you know, uh, uh, the quality of the car, because I know in the end that will, that will, we will be fine. Mm-hmm. If I had a crappy product, then I'd be worried because then I have to be a real good marketer or salesman. Okay. Yeah. And I'm not. <laughs> um, so uh, I would say that it, it, it's hard, it's really hard work. Um, and I would be remiss, remiss, uh, to not say a partner, uh, white, in my case, my, oh, my wife, um, just always being there and understanding because it isn't easy. It's long nights. Um, it's, it can be long days. Um, in fact, one time she said to me, we were getting a car ready. I'm not sure if it was a show or a client, but, uh, she said she felt like a widow. Um, you know, there was no one in the house, but her and the dogs, oh. Cole and I were sleeping in the shop, wow. um, getting this car done. And we were, I think it was two straight weeks. You had a deadline. You had to hit we it. We had to hit it and yeah. damn it. We were hitting it. Yeah. And, uh, um, yeah, now I remember the situation. Yes, we were, damn it. We were hitting it. And, uh, um, uh, but having, you know, someone like that, that just, is is understanding uh, because it 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 can be very uh, trying on patience and um, and emotions. Yeah. So. And I can relate to that. This would not happen west of Tulsa if it wasn't for Beth agreeing to some crazy ideas. I along agree. The way. I agree. So, Thank you, no, Beth. I agree with that completely. So if somebody wants to get in touch with you, yes, go to your website. Um, so we uh, uh, there are a few ways. Um, it's mansmotorcompany.com. And that is also uh, Man's Motor Company um, on Instagram. And it's M-A-N-Z. M-A-N-Z. Right. Yep, Motor Company, all one word. And then uh, feel free, call me, 603-213-1308. All right. Well, we were really, really appreciate you coming in. Oh, I we're, know it was a long thrilled. trip. You guys have gone through a lot to get here. Yeah. Snow, pneumonia. Uh, trucks that don't show up on time. Canceled show. Canceled, Canceled show. Sh- they went. They came all the way out here to California for a show and a great purpose. Canceled. A great purpose, but, but it okay. was canceled. Our crazy California weather. Yes. Had to join us. Yes. Though. All right. All right. Thank you, David Cole Mans. We really appreciate you guys making yes, the long trip so to much. come out here thank from you. Yeah, New thank Hampshire. You. Well, so. We thank you. This was a real treat. All right. We enjoy it. And we'll be looking for the six by six rolling down. 
Highway 101. I, mm, it will yeah, be, be on fun. 101 and yeah. probably Montecito or Santa Barbara all week. That's yeah. So maybe at a local right. cars and coffee soon near yeah, you. Yeah. yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Thanks again, guys. Safe travels, guys. All right. Thank you. Don't forget Thank our you. tip line, westoftulsa.com. You can fill that out. We'd love to have you in studio. Um, it's working. We've actually got people contacting us now on the tip line. You guys know that, right? Yeah. We have somebody coming in maybe next week. Yes. Who contacted we love it. us we from Oregon. It. We love it. So, yeah, We're going to keep hammering that. We're yeah. going to keep hammering it. Follow, like, subscribe, and we have our YouTube channel. Thank you. There's a delay on <laughs> that. Wake one. up, Gabe. Wake I was looking at your face. That's why. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So I'm throwing them off. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Hypnotic. All right. Hypnotic beauty, CJ. Hypnotic beauty. And thanks for uh, watching and listening and whatever you listen and watch us on. We appreciate it. And we'll see you west of Tulsa.